Uh, Gutzer is a 61850 engineering tool used for testing, troubleshooting, and simulating of all 61850 communication profiles. Uh, these are some of the key Gutzer features. Uh, besides these functionalities covering 61850 communication profiles, uh, Gutzer is also equipped uh, uh, with, uh, uh, with Logic Editor Engine, uh, which is used for creating protection and automation test scenarios and with network test tools, uh, which are used for testing and measuring of network performance. Uh, in order to deliver fast and reliable performance, GUSER functionality is realized using client-server software architecture. Client is a Windows-based application with a graphical user interface by which a user initiates instructions to the server or sets test scenarios. Uh, graphical user interface is also used for presentation of complex data like ID configurations, uh, then MMS reports, Goose messages, or, or sample value streams. Uh, on the other hand, the server is a hardened PC box running on Linux operating system, uh, which is suitable for, for time-critical operations. And just, uh, just a question on, on this slide, just quickly. So uh, for the point number two, you, you're selling the hardware, or it's uh, you? It's something that a customer uh, can deploy on its own Linux system. It, yes, it, it, we 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 sell both. We sell both hardware and uh, software that or services in okay. the native source code that you can implement in your own solution. All right. All right. Thank you. Okay. Uh, so, here is an example of a GUSER engaged in a substation network. So, uh, in this picture, uh, you can see that GUSER PC box is the one communicating uh, with other 61850 based uh, uh, tools on the network, IDs, uh, while Windows application is completely isolated on the network and it is used only to issue commands or to present data uh, which is captured by, by GUSER PC box. Uh, from this picture, you can also see that GUSER can be simultaneously connected to the process bus and to the station bus as well, uh, which means that GUSER can simultaneously monitor and capture sample value streams or even generating sample value streams on the process bus uh, while monitoring uh, GUSER traffic on the station bus and also establish a connection with few or more, or more IDs uh, uh, on the station bus. Uh, this is a look of the of the Gutter PC PC boxes hardware so which are which are offering currently. So we are offering two two versions of hardware. One is the uh, RC10 running on Intel Atom 1.6 uh, GHz uh, processor, offering five Ethernet gigabit ports, two SSD ports, and also two RS232 or two three two ports. And the other one is more advanced hardware version RC100 uh, offering IC, uh, i7 processor uh, with 8 gigabit Ethernet ports. Uh, GUSER also uses a web configuration, web, uh, configuration interface uh, which, serves, uh, which serves for, uh, for hardware settings uh, like activating uh, 61850 services or setting network configuration or performing firmware updates. So here is a, a list of key uh, GUSER services. Uh, the GS service, which, which Amir had mentioned uh, previously, uh, covered MMS client and GUS publisher and subscriber services. Uh, then we have an SAG service, uh, which emulates server in the sense of uh, MMS communication, IC61850 server. Uh, then uh, GUSER supports also SMV service, which covers sample value services, including uh, generating of sample value streams, as well as monitoring and presenting these streams uh, in, uh, in table or graphical manner. Uh, XGTT service are used for testing and measuring uh, of network performance using various network test tools. Uh, then we have a uh, network redundancy analyzer and PRP driver, uh, which allow GUSER to engage in PRP network environment, both as a tool for monitoring PRP traffic as well as for simulating GUS messages with PRP trailer. Uh, GUSER can also be synchronized either by NTP or PTP protocol. And in the end, uh, GUSER offers also pickup service, uh, uh, which allows users to, uh, to save network traffic on one, uh, on one or more GUSER, uh, GUSER interfaces. Uh, to establish connection via uh, web interface, uh, 
IP, IP address uh, of GoSerp. Authentication is also required, so uh, you will admin both as username and as password. Uh, web configuration interface offers an overview of all Google services which are currently active and ready for use. So uh, now here is important to, to remember that if, uh, if you want to test or simulate some of the digital and encrypted communication profiles, uh, make sure that the appropriate service is active and ready for use, which you can tell by, by green color. And if it isn't, uh, it's, it, it can be simply simply uh, started. So I think you should remember also that after system is rebooted, most of the services will be off. So so make sure you, you start them again afterwards. Okay. Now this is uh, here's a few slides uh, uh, about uh, Google Graphic or user interface. I think we, we should we should skip this part. Uh, I mean, if you agree, uh, since. since Okay, so there's a, there's a few things about our, about Google Graphical Interface. Google Graphical Interface consists of four main windows. There is a Service Explorer window, then the, the main presentation window, the properties window, and in the end, in the end there's an analyst window. So I will I'll skip to the next slide, which is a snapshot from the from the Google application. I think it's a lot more clear. So. The Service Explorer window is uh, through which connection with Google services or any other ID is established. So, for example, here you can see that Google MMS client service is active. We also the uh, SV service for sample variables is also active, and the MMS server service is also 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 active simultaneously. So, and for example, we also could see that uh, that Google is currently connected to three different ID. Uh, the main presentation window uh, presents complex data uh, like ID6186 model, uh, MMS reports, which are, which are presented at this moment, and also serves to present whose messages or, or sample value trainings. The properties window uh, uh, presents, uh, presents further and more detailed explanation of the content within the, uh, within the main presentation window. So, for example, in this case, you have an external presentation of, of, of an NMS report. And in the end, there is, a, there is an error list, error list window. So, okay, now so in, in, in this uh -huh. tool, you, so you specify the IP address of your uh, Linux box, and the, yeah, the, can, the window service any... is communicating with the, with the Linux box? Uh, yes, of course. Yeah, you, okay, can, you okay. can assign. Okay, you can assign any any. There's a there's a default IP addresses, and after you after you connect to the PC box, you can assign you can assign any any IP address you you wish to. Obviously, your your Windows has to be set up to be on the same LAN domain, mm -hmm. so that yeah. you can reach that. So you can you can import an SCL file from that tool and like yes. uh, assign it. To assign it to the the Goose service running on one specific IP yes. uh, address, uh, yeah. and then you can decide Correct. what what you want to publish or subscribe to. Correct. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, I can show that show that uh, later. <coughs> I have one question. Uh, okay. Yes. Do, do you have a SCL uh, editor in your um, tool? Yeah. I see that you can import SCL, but do you have any um, SCL uh, editor? Yes. Uh, just a second. Here I can I can import an an STL file. So when you when you when you when you mean edit, uh, uh, you mean editing like data set, uh, data sets or, or boost control blocks. So uh, actually you can create create anything anything from from here. Yeah. So, so, so from, in, from in this particular device. window, in this particular window, you can. Uh, create an ID file that you can then later download on the Gooseir and simulate it. And in this window, you start with the uh, only available option. When you start uh, creating an ID, you can create only logical device. Uh, why don't you go and make a few steps, Nebisha? Uh, yeah. Okay. So, for example, I could I could uh, I could edit some some data set, for example. No, no, no. Yeah, I'm I'm I'm, uh -huh. I'm thinking more about creating a new one from scratch. A uh, new. You can, uh -huh. also, you can also create a new. Uh, you mean new like? So, yeah. Uh, right. 
So, so right now, options that we are given are given based on yes. So if you start, so the answer is you can view existing SEL file. You can add on the top of existing SEL file. You can edit some parameters, add new if you want to. And or you can create an ID from scratch like he's doing right now. So these yeah. options are available. Uh, with some okay. help from the menu that doesn't allow you to have selection of objects that you can't use now, for example. Yeah, so for example, object. yeah. Hey, can, can, you specify, yeah. <clears throat> can you specify if you want to use edition 1 or edition 2? Uh... For, that, for that, we have a, a tool called SCL Matrix, which okay. is a tool that basically deals only with uh, configuration. It's a system configuration tool that deals with IEDs and can create IED based on Edition Mar or Edition 2 specifications. Here okay. on Goose Air, you don't have embedded rules whether this is Edition 1 or Edition 2, but you have all options if you have knowledge to create either Edition 1 or Edition 2. So in other words, you are given option to create whatever you want, and if you know how to do it, you can create edition one or edition two. In the other tool and SEL matrix, you are actually guided to develop either edition one or edition two. It's more like engineering tool for engineering processes. So that's how we okay. differentiate the two products. Okay, thanks. Okay. So you can continue with presentation. Uh, okay, okay. Uh, okay, so. Uh, uh, now I'm going to, to show you uh, Good services which are supported by GoodSer. Uh, GoodSer is able to simulate Goose messages, uh, monitor Goose traffic, or even subscribe in a way to a specific Goose message. Uh, when it comes to simulating Goose messages, uh, Goose definitions can be obtained either by reading Goose definition from a, from a library, or it can be obtained by importing an STL file as I, as I have done previously. Uh, Goose messages could also be fully customized, uh, which means that no import or reading of Goose definitions is required whatsoever. So, therefore, parameters of Goose control block as well as data set members are all are all up to user to define. Uh, now, when working with multiple IEDs, uh, I recommend using Goose definition option, uh, which will allocate and, and present all Goose definitions which are available for, for users to simulate. Uh, this also includes Goose configurations obtained from a live ID or from an imported STL file. Uh, monitoring of Goose traffic is available in two different ways, uh, using Goose Monitor Tool and Goose Event Monitor Tool. Uh, Goose Monitor Tool uh, presents uh, Goose Monitor Tool presents uh, uh, every single captured uh, captured Goose message, so regardless of the of the trigger that has occurred. Uh, while a Goose Events Monitor is more like an event-based monitor, uh, meaning that only Goose messages which are triggered by a new event shall be presented, uh, which, which can be very suitable for monitoring networks with, uh, with large amounts of, of Goose traffic. Uh, Goose Monitor is also linked with Goose Air Property section, uh, which in this case gives an XML presentation of every frame of Goose message captured, and then something similar to, to, to what Wireshark uh, is doing, and uh, it presents in the exact order in which frames are sent by the server, uh, which I think is very useful, especially for troubleshooting purposes, and also for 61850 beginners to see to see the exact structure and content of Goose message. Uh, okay, so I uh, I prepared some some brief background of Goose communication model. So if you uh, if if you are familiar with uh, with uh, with basic uh, with basic principles of Goose communication model, of, I could I could skip this part. It's, or I, shall I go on? Yeah, I, I think you can skip this if uh, uh, unless you will have some really specific information to addition to. No, no, this is just 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 basics, just basics. Okay, uh, 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 Goose Air is capable of generating and transmitting Goose messages to, uh, to the network. And this could be done in two different ways, uh, using pre-configured Goose definitions, 
and these are called simulated goose messages. And by simulated goose messages, I mean that uh, Goose Air can fully replace uh, a live ID on the network by means of goose communication. And in order to do this, the uh, user needs to, to provide an exact goose definition to Goose Air, uh, which can be done either by importing an STL definition of an ID or by reading Goose, con goose configuration of, of a live ID. And Goose Air also supports uh, fully customized Goose messages, which are called custom Goose where all parameters of Goose control block as well as members of the data set are, are up to user are up to user to define. Now, uh, if, you, if, you, Nibos, if we can just hold on mm -hmm. and go back to I just okay. wanna I just wanna point point out here because we discussed a little bit over the email, Simon and yeah, I uh, basically uh, you have now your PC or Linux and services that are ready to uh, perform all the 62050 profiles, but you need to feed them. You need to feed model of an ID that uh, represents uh, a model of, a, of an ID. Uh, so um, in addition to uh, uh, all communication profiles, there is an additional XML library in the whole concept of uh, Gypsum library that allows you to uh, make an interface and receive all these models either through uh, SCL files or something that you create, basically uh, an XML interface that allows you to uh, feed all these services with ID models. And that's part that needs to be, uh, if you are relying on our XML lib, uh, then you need to just create some sort of interface or uh, API that uh, uh, convert uh, XML file into something that is uh, suitable for XML interface, and it's a very similar, a just simplified version of SCL file. That's the sort of uh, uh, structure of the XML library. Uh, and that's the part that, uh, in addition to getting services and everything, you will, need to, you will need to develop something that can take an SCL file and parse it in a way suitable for for the services. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that, that's question. interesting. <laughs> okay. and, and, and again, it's uh, the, the the XML interface is very similar. It, it couldn't be 100% match with uh, SCL model uh, defined by 6250-6. But uh, we created that is when you read it, basically, uh, you believe you're reading an XML an SCL file. That's that's how uh, similar it is. So. It's not really a huge task to create something on whatever your interface is going to be uh, towards the input of an SCL file or something that creates an SCL file, and to drop into into the into the services of gas mm -hmm. or sample values. Mm -hmm. Could we could we use your library to simulate multiple um, IED? I mean, yes, absolutely, absolutely. You so can. we. Within one process, one single process. Yes, yes, absolutely. Yeah, I, can, I will show. I will show that later. Yeah, yeah that. one single process can simulate hundreds of. Uh, it's basically memory is the limitation. The, every module requires certain amount of memory, and basically, it's your targeted system, and amount of memory that your targeted system has. That's the limitation. Okay, so we can import multiple. Uh, uh, SCL files, in fact. Absolutely. absolutely. Yeah, of course. Well, yeah, I can show you that. Okay. okay good. I have to, to stick with the presentation schedule. So, for example, I'm going to turn off this one. What is the maximum you've tasted? 200. 200? I, I believe, yes. I believe the service is now, uh, there is a global parameter. It's set to either 200 or 256 or 264. I can't remember honestly, but it's basically the limitation is memory. Okay. Okay. So now I'll input some some one SCD so file. What, what, yeah. What he's doing is uh, he's grabbing one single SCD file. SCD file is composed of multiple IEDs. So that's and he uh, imported entire. SCD file, which means every individual file, and you can now see the list of IDs, 
So now I actually use now the goose definition option, which I, which I told you earlier. So these are all these are all goose definitions which are currently present in the, in the goose air environment. Yeah, basically, so on the goose. top you you have a filters that search information found in these multiple devices in this object, in this window tree, in, this, in the service explorer on the left, and he chose to filter by goose definition, and so basically that filter goes from every single ID and search for a goose message, and if it finds it, it puts it in that window to the right, so that you can quickly go into the simulation. And you can see all the parameters of the goose messages with control block, data set, ID, and uh, MAC address, VLAN, and so on. Okay, good. Okay, so now, uh, now you know, I, I first need to connect. Yeah, uh, so just, connect just step by step, Nebosh, uh, Nebosh, just step okay, by step. Okay. What, what he's now doing uh, is basically I'm he is now calling service 40 that he has set up on one of the network cards of a Goose Air. So yeah. this is one 940, yes. so we, yeah. Mm -hmm. It's actually the, 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 the IP address at which, which Goose Air is located. And this this service is, is in charge for MMS services as well as Goose Publisher and, and subscribing. So now to, to simulate, you go uh, you go right click add and choose simulated goods. Simulated goods, as I said before, uh, is the one that which use pre-configured pre-configured definition. So now in the Goose Control Block drop down menu, you can see all all the definitions which are previously listed in the Goose Definitions window. So, so this I is the choose, list. This is the list. This one, yeah. This is the list is, of is, all Goose messages found in all these IDs on the left. Yeah. And you can select yeah. them you yeah. want to simulate. So here, here you choose the sending policy. Uh, this is the default sending policy. And you can also customize, customize your own sending policy. And eventually uh, choose the, one of the Goose Air interfaces at which, uh, at which uh, Goose, Goose messages shall be transmitted. And so now here you see that the, the one one good definition is is configured. So now I will add add more good definitions. So for example, this one it's the same the same the same settings. And here you can here you can here you can start here you can start uh, start uh, uh, transmitting good messages. Okay. Uh, so to monitor Goose messages, uh, uh, we use Goose Monitor option or Goose Events Monitor option. Uh, so since I'm since I'm transmitting Goose messages or EMP6 interface, here's the, here are the all interfaces. EMP6 this is the, the same at which at which uh, I transmit transmit those Goose messages. So I will start monitoring and start all the all the all the Goose definitions. So now in what, monitor, in the mo okay. What are the Am fields? I? What are the fields that you can change uh, when you publish a, a goose message? Uh, in the in the uh, uh, in the case of simulated goose messages, uh, I need to stop to configure it first. Uh, okay. Can you can you hold there, please, for a second? Uh -huh, okay, yeah. So it is part of the standard. This is the rule. When you are when you enable goose message, which he does with this uh, button, these three buttons at the top. Yeah, by default, you cannot make any changes of the goose control block, except that you are allowed to change data set value. So I'm, not other I'm not talking about the structure of the goose message. I'm talking about uh -huh. the, the different uh, flags and data that the, are... You can change only data change. set. You can change only data set. You cannot change any other mm -hmm. parameters. That's the rule. So, but you could do it in treating your own SCL file and import uh, it, right? It, it is, yeah, but, yeah, yeah. But, but, but if you follow the standard, once you enable Goose, once you start Goose message, all properties no. are locked except yeah. the data set elements. No, yeah, the I parameters think that, that can change you can disable it. But you, have, but you have access at all the different uh, data in the data set. Yes, exactly. That you, you are allowed. And Nebosh, you can show at the bottom you can show the how you can change data set elements. Uh -huh, okay. So yeah, the data set elements mean values of data set elements. So the 
Coursera is Coursera is able to, to change to change values of data set members uh, in live mode. So now I'm going to so show if you look you how at the bottom, if you look at the bottom, if you look at the bottom yeah, screen, this is the the data the, set. Yeah, yeah, this so is all the data the set and and the current the current values of 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 uh, of members. So, so he but before that, the top, just to he selected the top goose message, the C sixty one thousand nine, and for that goose message data set uh, uh, associated data set is at the bottom. You can see the uh, boolean boolean values in the data set, and in that window, he's allowed now to make changes and create create new goose messages. Create new events, yeah. Yeah. Create so, new yeah. So after after um, okay. So now uh, 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 to to show the goose events monitor also because the the changing of the member of the data set will also trigger a new event and the, the state number. The state number of the goose message will will increment uh, by one, so the goose events monitor will actually capture capture a new event. So, for example, I'm going to change this from false to true. And in the goose events monitor, you can see that that the event has occurred. The state number state number has incremented by one. And also in the goose monitor window, uh, you can see that simulation follows the the retransmission policy. So here is the here is the 360 uh, 109 109 relay. So you can see uh, you can see that just just a second. Uh, uh, you can see that uh, that uh, retransmission policy is uh, is as as configured. Um, okay. So I want to just wanted to show you uh, if I understood if I understood uh, the earlier you could you could change so uh, so in order to to uh, uh, in order to distinguish distinguish uh, goose messages which are simulated and uh, which are which are transmitted by a real ID, uh, uh, standard recommends using the test bit for addition one and simulation bit for addition two. So, oh, yeah. uh, so that's one, the difference. Yeah, that's the so, key difference of addition one and addition two. Uh, yeah. So, uh, so as far as the parameters which allow to to, to be changed. Uh, Gusser can can change this uh, can insert the simulation bit and test bit just to just to inform other other devices on the network that the Goose messages are transmitted by by a simulated device. And you can also change the the real environment because it's uh, it's the laboratory conditions and so uh, you don't know the the exact uh, switch configuration. Okay. Yeah, that's cool. Um, j uh, one question about the time. Uh, I see at the bottom, the, um, are you able yeah. to synchronize the timestamp of the goose that's being transmitted in simulation mode with 1588 timestamping? Yes. Uh, uh, Nebusha, can you open the web, ser web services? Yeah. So uh, you mean the time synchronization? Yes. yes. So here, this is basically the box that uh, is providing time sync. And you can see that option are uh, SNTP or NTP. Uh, the difference is uh, uh, in NTP you can have multiple server instances. Uh, in SNTP you rely only on one. Uh, and at the bottom you have PTP options. So you can syn synchronize Goose Air with any uh, PTP clock, or you can add uh, um, <coughs> additional card on Goose. Uh, goose, uh, uh, goose Air PC and get the GPS signal and act as a master so you have options to add additional. Okay, cards. is it a, a card, a specific card? It is uh, different cards. One is uh, uh, pulse per second, that's to allow uh, sample values yeah. to be synchronized and, uh, uh, and also have a variety of other cards that you can get antenna and get the GPS and the, 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 the clock basically. Okay, so the, the 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 hardware is capable of handling mechanically these cards. Yes. Yes. Yeah. Okay. It's a okay. PCIe four uh, four interface. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So, any any questions or or, or shall I move on regarding no, I think regarding you can move on. Those, those simulation? Okay. Okay. Uh, so this is the 
we already we already done this part actually uh, since I since I show you how to how to simulate those messages with the pre previous definitions. Mm -hmm. And this is this is also uh, yeah I, I could show you this this one more thing for example uh, as I said uh, uh, hello uh, I'm I'm still there I uh, think no, somebody no, left I don't know where it is um yeah I don't know I don't know down there left down there left uh huh, uh -huh. Um, so. Okay. So what I wanted to do is uh, now I'm going to uh, to connect. Uh, we will connect uh, with ABB relay, which is uh, an addition to relay, and uh, yeah, it will it will read uh, its goose definition and and show here offer offer this goose definition for for simulating. So this is regarding regarding the, the previous the previous uh, story about about simulating pre-configured goose messages. So. So by so doing that, you're acting you're acting as an MMS client, right? Yeah, I, yes, exactly. I'm acting as an MMS client, and as an MMS client, I can I can read the the IP sixty one eight three configuration, mm -hmm. uh, which means that I can I can know the Goose configuration of an ID. So 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 uh, Goose Air Goose Air can uh, can can act as a can simulate can simulate Goose messages according according to this configuration. This is this is what I wanted to. What I wanted to show, so it should be it should be on on the end. Now oh, here it is, and it's now it's done in the in the same way as as the other ones. So the goose message is practically uh, uh, exactly exactly the same as as the goose matches which is sent by real ABB relay. So I can show you I can show you that also by by uh, by turning on uh, yet another monitor which will capture capture goose messages on the other interface to which ABB ABB relay is connected. So for example, yeah, here it is. I can also filter this this ID. So from here, you can see that that the the, the goose message is exactly exactly the same as as the one which is which is sent by Goose Air. So in order to, as I said, in order to distinguish these two these two these two goose messages, uh, you could. You could turn on the test bit and the simulation bit to to to, uh, to tell the other devices that that uh, those messages are sent by by a simulated tool. So here, for example, you can see that the simulation the simulation bit is on right now. So when you start when you start transmitting those messages. And these are on this interface. Interface four. So, so you can change you can change live the needs commissioning or the test flag uh, of the uh, Google well, message. Uh, it depends. Yeah. Well, it depends. It, 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 the services are supported by by uh, by by an ID. Okay. You can change. Yeah. You can change. Uh, you can change all all of the all of the parameters. So here, for example, you can see that that the goose message is, is simulated and the test bit is on, actually, which is uh, in comparison with this uh, bit. You see that there is not simulated and the test bit is is false. Okay. Am I going too fast? Maybe maybe I should uh, maybe I should. Slow no, down no, it's, it's it's perfect. Well, I don't know. Uh, there's uh, in theory ten minutes remaining in the meeting. Uh, no, uh, no. Press by. no, I have time. I have time. So okay. I don't know. Okay. Okay. I have time too, I so that's really perfect. It's it's pretty in interesting so far. It it really uh, matches with kind of things we're doing. Well, well, okay. I'm I'm glad to hear that. Okay. Okay. So shall we transmit to 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 a sample value service? 
or is there any any questions maybe uh, maybe that you have uh, regarding the good services? Um, not not me uh, for now. What about um, the goose over um, wide area network? And, um, uh, you mean the VLAN network? Yes, the 90-5 uh, standard. Well, well, I don't know actually. I don't know actually what do you mean? Well, what what do you mean exactly? Uh, goose messages over the <coughs> And um, the extension of Goose messages to transmit Goose message over um, wide area network. Uh, wide area network. Uh, yes, the 61850-90-5 standard. Well, no, 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 no. Sorry, I, I, I was uh, I was a bit off. I'm, I'm, yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm... Hello. Yes, I was I was a bit disconnected for a couple of minutes. Yeah, we have a we have a question uh, regarding yes. the 61850 uh, uh, 5 standard. So if you if you please can can take over. Okay, what is the question? Sorry. Yeah, do, you, do you support this uh, goose messages? Uh, you are talking about. Uh, Goose messages over UDP. Yes. Okay. So we we don't we don't have the library, but uh, I can tell you what we did a uh, few years ago before the standard even came out. Actually, some five years ago, uh, our our lab is in Calgary, and all relays were at that time in Calgary, and all our developers were in Belgrade, Serbia. So what they did in order to uh, route Goose messages from relays in local network in Calgary lab all the way to their office. We actually created a goose over UDP uh, and uh, that's how they tested everything and how they managed to get goose messages. The answer is no, we don't because we know customers has, uh, has requested us to develop yet. Uh, I don't really see if there is anyone who is uh, asking for it, but as soon as someone says yes, we want to help, we actually do help. Uh, we would just have to go and check the uh, exact implementation of the standard, and we're talking about days rather than weeks to get to uh, uh, routable goose messages. Okay, thank you. Um, okay, so uh, uh, do you agree that uh, we skip for now to, to send a value service? Yeah. Okay. Uh, so, uh, just a second. Uh, send value uh, service uh, are the newest feature that we have developed and included among other Google services. Uh, sample value service covers both the generation and monitoring of, of sample based streams. Uh, sample values uh, generator uh, is equipped with a state sequencer property which is capable of uh, generating complex signals enriched with a DC component and harmonics of higher order. Uh, monitoring of sample value streams being available in two different ways. Uh, there's a table view where effective uh, root mean square of values of voltages current uh, active and reactive power as well as power factor are recalculated for every 4,000 4, uh, sample values packets. 4,000 corresponds to, to one second for this search power system. And Wooser also supports a graphical view where data is presented in sinusoidal manner, offering a sample count and actual value of, of every sample captured. So, uh, as for as uh, for good messenger, I also prepared uh, a brief background on sample based continual communication model. So if you agree, well, I could skip these parts too, and uh, and start with start with uh, with the simulations. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. 
Okay, configuring and transmitting of sample video streams on, on GooServe is done very similar with uh, Goo simulations, meaning that firstly, the user needs to configure sample values control block and its parameters, and then configure sample value state sequencer and eventually choose one of the uh, one of the available GooServe interfaces to which sample value streams shall be shall be transmitted. Uh, parameters of sample values control block are configured through a so-called sample values definition window, uh, while actual values of, of currents and voltages are, are configured within the state sequencer, state sequencer window. So uh, here's a figure that, that illustrates configuring of sample values strings. Uh, user needs to, to configure sample values control block, which corresponds to sample value control block definition then configure the state sequencer where actual values of currents and voltages are set, and eventually choosing uh, one of the GooSair interfaces to which the sample values uh, shall, be, shall be transmitted. Uh, this is sample values control block definition window, and it is divided uh, in four sections. These are mandatory fields of sample values control block. Then these are the VLAN parameters of sample value streams. Uh, then we have an, uh, an optional field where you choose which optional parameters shall be included in sample value stream. And in the end, we have a sample mode as well as as well as simulation bit, which is an addition to uh, property. Uh, state sequencer is where you configure actual values of currents and voltages as well as phase angles and power system frequency. Uh, these are some of the key features of sample values state sequencer. Uh, GooSer supports uh, multiple state property which allows users to simulate pre-fault, fault and post-fault conditions and power system frequency would also be changed by state. Uh, uh, state sequencer also offers DC components and harmonics of higher order after nine harmonics or similar in complex signals. And there is also a boost trigger which can be used then as an external input and change current state of the state sequencer. Uh, and setting of quality bits uh, for each separate, separate phase is, is also available through state sequencer. So this is the, the state sequencer main window. This is where you set multiple states and, and nominal nominal power system frequency. This is where you choose duration and the frequency of each state. So here, uh, here uh, it's important to distinguish these two frequencies, which is the nominal system frequency, and uh, uh, and uh, then the so-called state frequency. Uh, uh, the nominal frequency of the power system uh, also determines a sample rate parameter. And it's always the same regardless of the state. Uh, in other words, uh, the nominal system frequency determines the, the sampling rate of frequency, sampling frequency of the of the of the merging unit. And on the other hand, the state frequency is by default uh, uh, the same value as nominal frequency. But if you wish to simulate the frequency disturbance in power system, you should change you should change the the state frequency. And this is where the, the amplitude and phase angles are set. And here you can here you can enrich a signal with the DC component at harmonics of higher order up to up to nine harmonic. And state sequencer is also equipped with uh, with the goose trigger functionality, uh, which means that if properly configured, goose message could trigger a state change. And to configure goose trigger, type the uh, destination MAC address and the application ID parameter. And, uh, and choose which member of the data set will trigger, will trigger the, the state change. And eventually here is where you, uh, where you set, uh, set quality bits for, for, each, for each separate state. Uh, monitoring of sample values is available through graphical view property and is also available in live mode uh, using uh, sample values online monitor property. Uh, this is a snapshot of the sample values graphical view. Uh, graphical view property works similar to, to disturbance recorder, 
uh, meaning that it captures up to five seconds of sample value streams and it displays results in as high as possible resolution. So since this, since this is a, an 80 samples per period stream, resolution is, is exactly 80 samples per period. You can see the timestamp and the sample count of every sample are, are displayed <coughs> along, with, along with instantaneous values of so all four currents and voltages. And time is time is presented in milliseconds. Okay, and I'll just add. I'll just add. Nebuchadnezzar, can you go just back to okay. the next slide? So this okay. particular calculation is done at the graphical user interface program. So it's a part of the Windows of the Windows program. Uh, the, the 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 goose here will feed uh, process bus value to the program to the user and then user on its own PC will basically calculate uh, and present information in this view. So this is not part of the Goose Air program uh, in, on the PC box. On the, on the PC box, Goose Air will capture and forward or simulate uh, sample values and but will not provide calculation for these windows. Mm -hmm. Yeah, got it. Can That's you why it's limited to five, five seconds and and whatnot. Is it possible to do some data logging? Uh, data logging is. Uh, I'm trying to remember whether there is anything to do data logging. Uh, no, no. As a simulation, as a test and simulation tool, really, we didn't cover that uh, feature in Goose Air. Uh, okay. 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 This is a uh, this is sample values online monitor, uh, which offers table view of sample value streams, and it uses actual values of currents and voltages to uh, to calculate and display our mandatory power system frequencies like uh, like active power and and reactive power, and the power factor as well as as well as phase to phase phase to phase voltage. Uh, all values are recalculated for for every 4,000 4,000 sample values packet, uh, which corresponds to one second of 50 hertz power system, and uh, and uh, the color of all values will go red to indicate that values are are refreshed and recalculated. Okay, so now I'm going to 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 start the the application and and I'm going to connect to. To sample value service. So first, I should check if the, the SSD service started. So here we can see that that it is started in the that it is started. So if it isn't, the the, uh, the connection wouldn't be wouldn't be possible. So again. Here is where you here is where you add services, whether it's sample value source, NMS server services, or or any other. Then choose choose sample value service. And, and then again, he, and then again, he can address. choose any IP address on any on the interfaces that that he wants. Uh, sample value or as any other service can be tied to any IP address on Goose here. Any IP, yeah, they are all they are all configurable. So you go tools and choose new simulation and similar to similar to, to simulated goose messages. So first of all, uh, I'm going to I'm going to, to set parameters of sample values control block. Uh, this is the name of the sample values control block, which is which is uh, used uh, also as a, a template name. Where uh, if you have one one uh, if you have more than one more than one definitions. Uh, configured. Uh, this is the SVID parameter, which is which is a, a goose equivalent of the GOID parameter. Uh, the same is with the application ID. So, are you are you familiar with uh, with all these parameters? It's basically par parameters of sample value control block that yeah, you have to you have to set up. It's as per um, standard. No. 
Yeah, I can go. I can. I can go one one parameter at a time. So if you are yeah, familiar yeah, with it, I think Nebo should just move oh. one. You just move one. Oh, okay. Okay. Cycled. Okay. So I would turn on turn on all all uh, all optional fields and sample mode. You see, can choose the sample mode whether it's sample per nominal period or samples or samples per second. And I would, which yeah, is sample or uh, yeah. Uh, no, here you here you choose the uh, okay. Here you choose the sample rate, 80 or or 256. Yeah. And here here you actually choose whether whether the the information about sample rate will be presented in sample value stream. So, but but here you there is there must be some sample rates of, of emerging units since we are now now uh, simulating a emerging unit. And okay. the and the frequency of the network, 50 or 60 hertz. Uh, frequency, frequency is is choose is uh, uh, in the in the state sequencer. Now I will show you here the state sequencer. Okay. Here are the frequencies. So this is the the nominal system frequency which covers a 50 hertz power system or 60 hertz power system, as I said before. And this is where the state frequency which which can simulate the the, the frequency disturbance disturbance in power system. Okay. So, so, so if example, I can interrupt you, Nebojša, if I can okay. interrupt you for a second, basically, he created the control block, all the definition of the uh, of the first section, if you wish, of the Ethernet packet. Now he's getting into the data set, and the data set he's it's it's fixed for the sample values, and uh, now he's choosing um, uh, to present sample values in either one long sequence that. Uh, is basically continuous sampling of uh, of sample values, or like in Omicron, you're probably familiar with some of the testing tools. You can say I'm going to create sample values in few sequences, and sequence one will uh, be uh, with these parameters, with DC uh, with the, the, that DC component, these harmonics, and then I'm going to move to sequence to state number two, which I will change and create, for example, fault condition. And, uh, and how do I move from state one to state two to state three and so on is I have either goose uh, that I'm monitoring in my system, which is usually the case, some event that is received either through contact or through the goose, or by the time, and the time expires, I can move on, or manually uh, test it. Yeah, you can, also, yeah, you can also change the states manually, yeah. Yes, and that's, this window is basically allowing him to create multiple the sequences or states where he changes the values and creates uh, the scenarios that he wants. Okay. okay, thanks. Okay, so for example, now I'm going to, to set three different states. And to, to distinguish these states, uh, I'm going to, for example, this would be 100 amperes and this would be 10 kilovolts. So in the second, in the second state, I will use 200 and and 20 kilovolts, and in the third state, I will use 300 and, and 30 kilovolts. So this is some, some some basic signal. It's just to choose, just to demonstrate, just to demonstrate the state changes. And eventually, I choose the the, the, the sending interface. So again, I will go with the, with this interface, which covers the the laboratory in our in our office, just to just to avoid the the network overload. So the same with uh, with uh, good simulation. You now here uh, have uh, presented all the values. So you remember that that we have villain parameter are were not included, and all the all the uh, the optional fields were included. So this is the refresh time, sample synchronize, sample rate, and sample mode. And this is the simulation bit, which which implicates that uh, that sample values streams are, are transmitted by a simulated device. Okay, so. And I'm going to, to start the sample values monitor. And again, choose the interface at which I wish to, to capture sample values traffic. Now, and here is interesting to say, okay. Nebosha, it, okay. it's interesting to say that you can, with this graphical program, you can actually control multiple goose air boxes. So you can, you can, you can connect yeah, to IP address. Yeah, of course, I can connect. Yeah. I can connect to and, another to another goose there as well. Yeah. So we have one located in 980 80 IP address. Just a second. 
So basically, what so in other numbers, words, like in other words yeah. program, program is capable of uh, dealing with multiple Goose Air PC boxes. All you need to do is say, I want to find sample value monitoring service. And uh, so that sample value service is, can be found on this particular IP address, which belongs to certain card that part you, so you select uh, or configure through the web interface. And then when you connect to that service, you are uh, monitoring on specific interface. Then you can tell service, hey, you know what? You can now go and find any network card on your system and monitor that particular sample values on any of the of the of the MAC addresses or network cards uh, that you find that you find on your on your system, and likewise, um, when you are uh, uh, publishing Goose message, all you need to find is IP address of the Goose publishing service, which is GAS. You find the GAS and you tell GAS, okay, I want you to publish this message on one of the interfaces that you see on your system, and you can select which interface. And these IP addresses can be on multiple boxes and you have ability to, to work with multiple multiple gooses. Yeah, so, so here is uh, here how it looks like. So now uh, here I choose here I choose at uh, to which uh, at which uh, goose hardware I wish to listen to listen the sample based traffic. So now I can choose between two two GOSA, GOSA PC boxes since I'm connected to two GOSA PC boxes. And here you can choose the, the, the exact interface at which you wish to, to, to listen. So for example I can I can I can transmit sample values from this nine forty machine and I can I can monitor these these strings on on the other GOSA PC box. So here you can see that uh, one one sample value string is captured, and you can see all the uh, the, the basic parameters uh, which, are, which are transmitted, like like the optional fields or the application ID, but the actual values are are monitored and captured uh, using online monitor or graphical view. So online monitor is now is now calculating for every 4,000 packets. So remember that for first state we we set uh, 100 and 10 kilovolts. So now I can I can go back and I can change state to to three for example. Click OK, and you can see here that that the state is changed and now that's 300 and percent and 30 30 kilovolts. And this is how how graphical view how graphical view works. You 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 start monitoring. So now it will go up to five seconds and it will stop after afterwards. And this is the this is the presentation of sample data streams. So there's only one one phase is included. So here you can see here you can see the sample count and the time and the time of, of every sample captured. Okay. I can uh, I can for example simulate some some more complex some more complex signals. So, for example, we could add add two more two more phases, and I could add a, a DC component as well. So, add the 20% of the DC component, and for example, for for stage two, I could I could add the, the third harmonic. So the third harmonic is, is simultaneous in all three phases. So, so the the phase angles need to be set need to be set uh, uh, set to zero in order for 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 three phase signal to be symmetrical. And here I can add the ninth harmonic, for example.
so now in the online monitor you can see that all three phases are active and uh, there's a slight the, the, the value is slight uh, higher than than 100 because exactly because of the higher harmonics and in the graphical view I know the higher harmonics are not nice to me uh, with the, the in the first state I, I added the DC component the DC component so you, you can see that uh, that the, the signal is is uh, is slightly uh, is slightly moved moved up because because of the DC component it's not it's not symmetrical with the with the time with the time um, line with the timeline. Okay, so I will now switch switch state to to number two. And here is the signal with. Uh, with the third harmonic. And I could switch also to, to, to state three. Yeah, this isn't this is symmetrical. I guess I I I, uh, I set up the wrong the wrong values, but but this looks this looks fine. So, okay. <clears throat> okay. Is it possible uh, to define customize the data set for sample value? Uh, well, data set for sample values should be fixed. So there are there are there are sixteen there are sixteen members, eight uh, eight eight yes. physical values to say yeah. For for okay. okay, yeah. Just so by, by yeah, yeah, edition just two, edition two is gonna come out on for new edition of the sample values I understand in September, and that will be one of the changes. You will be able to alter the data set uh, from the perspective of gas or uh, sample value services. It is basically uh, it is basically very similar to goose. And it's just made fixed because the light edition is calling for the fixed data set. But you have option if you want to, you can extend uh, functionality of sample value by allowing to have uh, different different data sets and followed with the um, with the presentation. Uh, so you have option to 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 extend to extend your data set. Okay. What is the number of sampled value that we that the Goose Air uh, PC can publish? Uh, well, it depends. It depends uh, on the it depends of the, the the processor which uh, which we are using. So it can yes. actually it can depend. Yeah, it can uh, it can sample a few uh, a few to that for sure. So, but uh, a few uh, a few to say a full few samples will for sure will be. Uh, will be with left, but uh, yeah, we are getting into zone where basically network cards are processing more than what CPU can do, and okay. uh, that's the basically limit. Uh, depends on the CPU size. That's why we are offering two different boxes. One is uh, based on Atom processor, and another one is on i7, uh, which obviously can provide you more in terms of. Uh, 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 capacity and functionality. Okay. Is there any uh, way? Is there any way to uh, introduce some failure, um, drop one packet, or stop um, uh, with uh, with sample values or with uh, or with good message? Both. Uh, with, uh, uh, with good messages, yes, there is a way of generating fault traffic or or, 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 missing, the, or missing some state number or sequence number, and and these services are covered by by XGTT service. This is this. So this we have another for, we have another service called yeah. uh, uh, Network Test Tools uh, services called XGTT, and that service is basically designed to create. Uh, avalanche conditions, abnormal uh, missed packets, uh, uh, packets with uh, 
uh, errors in ASN encoding. Uh, the uh, embedded uh, C generator that can basically create a, a fault on encoding in any place randomly. Uh, so, and then you can analyze how your system respond to these abnormal conditions where uh, you have purposely created missed packets where you have uh, millions of packets flying through the network um, and so on. Uh, these features are they are they part of the library that you can sell? No, they are additional service that, uh, uh, okay. but it's part of the of the Goose here as well. Yeah, I can show you. Uh, I but can it, show it, you it that goes it goes it goes, goes yeah. it goes very well on uh, the existing system. So uh, yes, that's a component that can be uh, easily integrated. Okay. Uh, okay, I can show you if you like. No, no, thanks. Uh, uh, okay. Well, I'm running out of time. Uh -huh. uh, well, okay. Uh, any questions more, maybe? Uh, maybe uh, related to the cost and maybe the licensing policy that you have. Uh, if we buy your uh, library, uh, to which extent can I use it in our product? So basically, uh, if you buy just a library without services, then you can uh, have option to have an unlimited number of products. And okay. uh, uh, if you choose to buy library and services, then it's a different license and it's a per product basis or, again, for unlimited number of products. So it's a different, a different options for uh, depending on what you exactly are buying we are not selling just library so we are trying to uh, address the time to market and make it instant really uh, that's why we in addition to everything we also have the .NET user interface program that you get as a sample so that you can develop a user interface quickly or you know, I should say instantly but it's not instantly it takes some time I guess but the the, the program actually provides you with the basic functionality of sending goose, monitoring goose, MMS, and so on. So all that depends what you're buying, what, what you're trying to achieve, and on how many products, and that's how the licenses are, are uh, given. So when you're talking about libraries, it means that it's uh, ain't C, C source code? Sorry, uh, come again? When you're talking about the selling libraries and not services, it's... Uh, you're talking about NC source code? Yes, yes, that's right. In form of so, C and C++ code, I guess? Or? Yeah, it's all on C code. Uh, okay. Don't get me wrong. When you, when you buy services, you also get library in okay. NC C code. Okay. So okay. this is just an extension. So you can go just to library in source code or library with a service with source code mm -hmm. and number of services that you want. Uh, that you want. And I, okay. I, I read, I read that you started the development, uh, the, the support of um, the chip from Altera, the Cyclone Five. Uh, we actually already have. Uh, so the 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 library itself is turned into. And now I'm talking about uh, to you guys. I thought it's only Linux operating system, but we also have a. Library for uh, that is uh, customized for .NET for uh, sorry for um, for uh, Windows users and also for embedded and for embedded we actually have working code and sample project on uh, Renaissance platform uh, which uh, is basically extension of uh, the library to be suitable on these uh, these platforms. So yes, we have that too. Okay. So it's not like one unique library and then you say, okay, I have a I have Windows. What, what am I doing? Well, you we have to change. And if you have a Linux, then it's a different ball game. If you have a embedded system, then it's a totally different. And then you have to end up working and adjusting that library. Uh, we have for different system, different library. That that's okay. the main point that I'm trying to to 
to see. And, and if we want to to support a new embedded system, uh, you can offer uh, this. We can work with you and, and find yes, a way yes. Of... Basically, you uh, give us the platform. Uh, the reason why we chose uh, Renaissance, to be quite honest, I initially wanted to uh, do something with the uh, Texas Instrument. They have new platform, but the developer uh, uh, told me that the customer support is terrible and that uh, and, and he would rather work with Renaissance. And we have really good uh, experience with Renaissance and uh, we got everything that we need, uh, and uh, free software and all resources available to uh, quickly uh, uh, get our library on Renaissance. And we got amazing performance as well on very small, very small uh, uh, controllers. So, uh, uh, but any platform that you might decide to go with, uh, basically you just uh, let us know or provide a development kit if you have, and uh, and we'll uh, we'll make it work. Okay. Good. Thank you. I have a small question just uh, related yes. to MMS. You showed uh, quickly that uh, you're, uh, you were able to use the MMS as a client to be able to extract those information from a relay. Uh, yeah, what what yeah. is the purpose of using the, the, your tool as a MMS server? Uh, for MMS server, if you want to simulate uh, uh, any SCL, sorry, file, any ID, that's what MMS server does. Uh, you can help those who have uh, HMIs or gateways who are uh, developing the program that are supposed to communicate with uh, dozens or hundreds of IDs. <laughs> Booth here can take all these IDs and you can simulate MMS server side. On the other side, if you look at the client capability of Goose here, you can go, for example, into the station and you can, with the Goose here as a client, you can search the entire network and you can find all 6250 based IDs and you can record their models, their basically configurations uh, from the memory and you can save it in your uh, environment and then when you come back to your office, you have a uh, image of all uh, of all IDs that you can now start simulating if you want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Uh, the MMS allows you, the, the 6250 standard requires you to be uh, self, to self-explain your model and to allow others to read your model as is. So in other words, when I connect an ID, I go into the memory and I read the model of the ID and I know everything about the ID. I know exact capability of ID. And if I know how to how to simulate the communication profiles, then basically I'm turning myself into the simulator of that ID. And that's the purpose of Goosey. Okay, and when you're acting as a client, are you able to retrieve uh, the report information from a relay? Yes, absolutely. And that yeah. wasn't part of the presentation. Yeah, just because no, it's okay. Uh, you yeah, don't yeah, have no, to show me. Sorry, yeah, yeah, absolutely. You can initiate reports and receive and retrieve reports. And okay, no, it's it's fine. Yeah. Um, another question: Do you publish the list of um, the tissues that you're complied with for edition two? Uh, we do have uh, for. Uh, 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 at the moment, we are going through the edition two compliance process with TUE. Mm -hmm. uh, but we are going with a, a different product called Engineering Studio that has uh, uh, all functionality except sample values because it's a Windows and you can't really do anything there. And we have all uh, set, uh, 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 um, tissues covered up to date and all our uh, model and protocol information statement are uh, stated in the documents. Once we complete the testing, we, we completed pre-testing, the testing is uh, scheduled for May 30th, uh, then we will basically uh, uh, go into the testing of uh, Goose Air. Uh, the reason okay. why we did it, it's just because we have more manpower on Windows side and it's easier to uh, uh, manipulate 
uh, with the test procedure and everything uh, then on goose air. But uh, uh, we, we, in parallel, we tackle all, uh, all uh, addition to issues on, on all platforms. So you can expect around June time or July time that we're going to go into addition to of the of the goose here, and I already started uh, initiated the, the, these uh, events for the summer. Okay, sounds good. So, what is the what is the purpose of uh, what, what what are you exactly trying to de design or develop? Where the the the, the, the simulator basically simulates the, the power grid and uh, mm -hmm. we already have some uh, interfaces to publish, subscribe uh, GOOS messages and, and mm -hmm. publish, subscribe sample values. Um, mm -hmm. uh, we, but we, you know, uh, well, it's the, I think it's the basis of your business. Uh, uh, we're actually feeling like 6150 is a, it's a team on itself and it's not like you cannot just work on it part-time uh, we have other no. protocols. <laughs> yeah, we no, have. No, you can't. We, you have to. We you also have to need. Engaged. Yeah, we need to cover like aerospace also uh, and um, the the automotive market. So uh, we're we'll just feeling we we start to to begin to to look in third party solution and and um, be able to gather some help on on this stuff because yeah. you know it's involving also very fast and uh, I. I well, I, I, we've, we've read your website, and I think that uh, some people from here met met some a few guys in Distributech show, um, mm -hmm. and um, so uh, it's it's just like from from what, from the, the the website, we've just felt felt that the the like you're exactly in the the same like architecture than that what we we will need to to integrate. So. Uh, I'm I'm uh, very happy to 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 have that that training this morning. It it gives a big big picture. Of course, it will uh, it might raise some question on on my side. We're gonna have some uh, uh, internal discussions, but uh, like everything you showed is is very very uh, on the well on on what I was uh, expecting to see. So it's pretty yeah. cool. And um, so in in the in that direction, if you can like send me. The record of the WebEx, it would be great because I want sure. to show that to our. Yeah, okay, uh, that, that, yeah. that was recorded. It's okay. 